As promised in episode 135, in this video we are going to look at the new RGB primaries module which appeared in Darktable 4.6. Let's go. Hi and welcome to episode 136 of Understanding Darktable. This is actually my second attempt at this video because the first version of it I published it to YouTube, I released it to the patrons, and I got a little bit of feedback that suggested that maybe I hadn't quite nailed it. So I've done a bit more research, having another crack at it, and hopefully I'll do it more justice. First up, I want to show you a thread on pixels.us, which was put up by a guy called Flannelhead. He is the guy who wrote the code for the RGB primaries module and the primaries panel, which now appears in the Sigmoid module. Now this was back in September of 2023 before the RGB primaries module had actually got its name and he said there seems to be some confusion, let's sort things out. The primaries module is a channel mixer with a different interface. It is meant mainly for small global color corrections or grading or local corrections when used in conjunction with masks. The internal math is a plain and dumb matrix multiplication. The next paragraph, he goes on to talk about the primaries panel within Sigmoid, which we'll deal with in the next episode. Let's now have a look at the RGB primaries help page within the Darktable manual. It says, RGB primaries adjusts the hue and the purity of the RGB primary colors while leaving uncolored gray pixels unchanged. In addition to preserving gray pixels, the opponency relationships between the colors are also preserved. If you increase the purity of the blue, then the opponent, the yellow, intensity is increased to balance things out. If you twist the blue hue towards cyan, the yellow is twisted towards orange. The module is essentially a channel mixer, as we heard him say in his post on pixels.us, but with a different interface. Even though the sliders are named red, green, and blue, all adjustments are global and affect the overall colorimetry of the image, not just like a channel mixer does. So what that means is, even though there will be pixels which you might perceive as green or blue or yellow, when you adjust the purity and the rotation of the red sliders, it will affect those other colored pixels because it affects all pixels. Because when we see a green pixel, it's not just pure green. It's going to have a little bit of blue. It's going to have a little bit of red, depending on the shade and the tint and whatever. When applied before the filmic RGB or sigmoid tone mapping modules, RGB primaries can be used to make small adjustments to colorimetry. When applied after the tone mapping modules, it may be used to apply creative edits such as tinting. Now down the bottom here at tint hue, when applied after tone mapping, this control allows the gray achromatic parts of the image to be tinted. When applied before tone mapping, it acts like a white balance control. So keep that in mind. We will see that in action in a minute when we start to look at some examples you know, of images. But in the process of me trying to wrap my head around this, I thought, well, in that first sentence, it says adjusts the hue and the purity of the RGB color, you know, pro colors. What exactly is meant by purity? And in the interest of doing, you know, some proper research, I went and found three different sources. Uh, the first of which says purity is similar to chroma, so much so that the terms are often interchangeable. The difference is that chroma involves a constant amount of light hitting a surface, while purity involves a constant amount of light being transmitted or reflected from a surface. So an interesting distinction there. Second definition, color purity is the degree to which a color resembles its hue. A color that has not been mixed with white or black is considered pure. Color purity is a useful concept if you're mixing colors as you want to start with a pure color because this has more potential to create different tones, shades, and tints. Now that second sentence, a color that has not been mixed with white or black is considered pure. 
that makes me think of a color space. And we remember, we have to think of color spaces as three-dimensional. And every time you go and look at a graphic on the web, that's a three-dimensional space compressed into a two-dimensional graphic. But if we think of a color space as having one axis for hue and one axis for saturation and a third axis for lightness, a color that has not been mixed with white or black is considered pure. So that makes me think that a pure color has maximum saturation on the saturation axis, and it can be any of the hues along the hue axis, but in terms of its luminosity, it has to be in the middle because it's not mixed with white and it's not mixed with black. So I hope I understand that correctly that a, a pure color can be anywhere on the hue, it's full saturation, and the luminosity has to be in the middle, like where, where gray would be if, if it wasn't saturated. Okay, third definition, purity is roughly equivalent to the term saturation in the HSV color model. The property hue is as used in general color theory and in specific color models, such as HSL and HSV color spaces though it is more perceptually uniform in color models such as Munsell, CIE Lab, and CIE Cam 02. Roughly equivalent to the term saturation. Mm, okay, that seems to contradict the previous term, so I'm not 100% certain that I've got all of this nailed down, and if you have a better understanding and can leave a comment that's less than a thousand word essay then please do because <laughs> i'm keen to learn but i think i think that previous definition a pure color is not mixed with black or white yeah i, I think i get it all right enough of the theory let's have a look at some images and see what we can understand from all of this i've got a couple of images from our Canada Alaska trip and an image from our road trip around New South Wales a couple of years ago. All right, so if we go to our color group and we turn on the RGB primaries module. Now, as I explained in episode 135, we have a hue slider for red, for green, and for blue, and then a purity slider for red, for green, and for blue, and then the tint hue and tint purity sliders at the bottom. Now, as Flannel had said in his post on pixels.us and in the help file, the sliders within the RGB primaries module will by default affect all of the pixels in the image. So if I crank up the red purity, we will see it most noticeably in the pixels which are red, but you will also, if you look closely, see that the other colors in the image are affected at the same time. So if I crank the purity up, we can certainly see that the red changed but hopefully you also noticed that there were changes to the greens and the blues in the image as well. So let's crank that up to plus 50%. And by the way, those are soft limits. You can right click on the slider and enter values greater than plus 50 and minus 50 if you want to, but we're not gonna do that right now. Same goes with the hue sliders. They have soft limits of plus 20 degrees and minus 20 degrees. You can go as far as minus 179.9 degrees to plus 179.9 degrees, but you will find that if you dial in those kinds of extremes, things get really crazy. In my experimentation, I've gone to 80%, and we'll go to minus 80, uh, sorry, not percent, degrees, plus 80 to minus 80. And you can see that that really has a radical change. And we can see from the vector scope how the red channel is really being rotated between yellow and purple magenta-ish. But like I said, don't drive those values to extremes like minus 180 plus 180. Ideally, you would stick to maybe minus 50 to plus 50. Now, as Flannel had said in the help notes, the controls here are designed for just subtle color adjustments. Globally, 
or if you want to do a local adjustment, you can combine it with a mask. So if I only wanted to affect those pixels which we perceive as being red, we could create a parametric mask. We'll turn the mask on so we can see what we've selected. And we can just dial this down to only affect our red pixels. We'll then use the saturation to get rid of those pixels which are not very saturated. And we could probably exclude some dark pixels as well. That's starting to impinge on the area that we actually want to pick up. So we'll leave it at that. So we've now basically just highlighted our red pixels only, and we can now adjust the hue of just those red pixels. And if you watch the vector scope up there in the top right hand corner, we can see that we are only affecting the red pixels and all of the other pixels in the image are being left exactly where they are. So if it was a case of wanting to change the hue of some certain you know, range of pixels within your image, this is a great way to do it. It's a bit like using the color zones module, but I think this is actually a little more accurate and gives you finer control. All right, let's just reset that. And let's just move on to the second image and we'll talk about the tint hue and the tint purity. So this is an image I shot in Stanley Park in Vancouver. Now, as Flannelhead has said in the manual, the tint hue and tint purity can, if the RGB primaries module is still in its default location in the pixel pipe, which at the moment it is, act as a white balance control. Now for this to work, you need to dial in some purity and I find that somewhere around five or 6% is enough. Anything more than that, it gets pretty wonky pretty fast. So we'll dial in something around 5% and we can now adjust effectively the white balance of our image. I actually find this image doesn't respond as dramatically as the previous image did. We could dial up a, a little bit more purity if we wanted to, to really see some extreme changes. And there you go, you can see that behaving like a white balance control. Now, according to Flannelhead, if we move the RGB primaries module to after our tone mapping module, it will then affect all pixels, not just the saturated ones, but the gray ones as well. So let's jump over to our active module group and we will move the RGB primaries to after filmic RGB. And then if we do the same thing, see, I don't quite get it. I would have expected that the less saturated pixels right near the center of the vector scope, that they would move away from that center position. But it still looks to me like all of the colors are moving around that central, you know, desaturated anchor point. So I'm not sure if there's some part of this that I'm not quite understanding. Maybe I'm not dialing in enough purity. I don't know. No, it still seems like, you know, things are anchored in the in the middle of that spectral display. So I'm not sure if there's a part of that that I don't understand or I've misinterpreted. I don't think I need to go on to the third image. I think we have covered the RGB primaries module pretty well. I think I've done a better job of it this time than I did on the previous occasion. Like I said, you can use it as a global control or you can use it as a localized control if you use it with a mask. And I think the secret is not to dial in extreme changes. I mean, if, if you need to, you, you have to. That, that, that comes down to a personal use case. But I think Flannel had designed it as a subtle color grading tool. All right, I will leave it there for now. In the next episode, we will look at the primaries panel in the Sigmoid module because although it's laid out in a similar fashion, and it kind of has a similar role, it has a different use case. And we will explore that in the next episode. So until then, take care and I'll catch you then.